This video is to show how to assemble the Stork Pediatric Bronchoscope set that is used in the removal of the foreign bodies from pediatric airways. This is how the set commonly arrives from the sterile service decontamination unit. Within the tray you will need to find the range of bronchoscopes from sizes 2.5 to 6. In the tray you will need to find the light carrier prism, the suction catheter guide, glass window bung and telescope guide with bung. You will also need to find your long, medium and short bridges, your 2.9 zero degree telescopes and light cable. At CUH, written at the bottom of the instrument checklist that comes with every set, you will find a chart that shows you which bronchoscope you will need for your patient based on their age. The chart goes from 0 to 14 years old. With foreign body aspiration, often the child is aged between 2 to 3 years old. So with that in mind, in this video I will be demonstrating how to set up a size 4 bronchoscope. The first thing you will need to do is determine which size bridge your size 4 bronchoscope will need to help you to connect up your zero degree telescope. Without the correct size bridge, your telescope will be either too long that it could damage the telescope and injure the patient or too short that it disrupts your view. All you will need to do is to hold the bridge alongside the scope and telescope and it should be obvious if it is too long or too short. To connect up the bridge with a bronchoscope, you'll need to locate your markers. At the top of the scope, there is a small wedge missing from the ring. Simply locate the rays notched on the inside at the bottom of your bridge, line the two up and press together and you should hear a click. To insert the telescope, first find the markers on the side of the bridge and make sure they are lined up. This is the unlocked position. And insert the telescope. To hold it in place, turn the top of the bridge clockwise so that the two lines no longer line up. You should never need to use force in this process. Next, connect up the light prism. Simply push it on and you'll hear a click when it is in place. It is possible to push it too far so that the light prism gets in the way of the telescope. Simply pull it back. On the suction catheter guide, on the side, there is a zero marker. You will need to find the zero marker on the bronchoscope. Line the two up and push together. Connect the light cable onto the telescope fibre optic end, not the light prism. With the suction catheter, push the catheter through the bung on the suction catheter guide and keep feeding it down until it comes to the end and pull it back so that it doesn't proceed at the end of the scope. If you are struggling, you can remove the bung to make it easier to pass the suction catheter. The anaesthetic airway circuit is usually connected after the scope has gone into the trachea. Simply push it onto the side port. Bear in mind not to connect the suction until it is needed and to turn it off when you are not using it, as it will remove the anaesthetic inhalation agents and vital oxygen that is being given by the anaesthetic airway. 1 in 10,000 adrenaline is used to decongest around inflamed foreign bodies. The suction catheter is used to introduce the adrenaline down the scope. This is how the set commonly arrives from the sterile service decontamination unit. With the optical forceps, the one you'll most commonly need is the peanut grabber. You will first need to remove the telescope and brung. Simply reverse the process and it should all slide out smoothly. With the optical forceps, it's very similar to when you're connecting your telescope up to your bronchoscope. Simply make sure your markers are lined up in the unlock position, slide the telescope down and turn clockwise. Remove the glass window plug and insert the telescope guide with bung. Then all you'll need to do is pass your optical forceps through the bung and down the bronchoscope. 